In the music business, it's the business that keeps the music alive. But what is it really like for a musician today? Let's find out by talking with a musician. I'm Roxanne Jansen, and welcome to Music Business Artistry. Today, I'm happy to have Willa Mamet here. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Well, I'm glad. That's great. Um, so tell us, how did you get started in the music business? Uh, that's a good Have I started in the music business? I suppose it's a real question. Um, I got started, I grew up in a family making a ton of music. Everyone in my family plays music of all kinds and a bunch of different instruments. And at some point, um, at some point, actually, I had a health crisis that... Um, that I thought was gonna keep me from singing. And I called up a dear friend, I live in Oakland now, and he lives at home in Vermont where I'm from, and I said, I'm coming home and we have to make a record because if I have to deal with this health crisis and I've never done that, I'll kick myself forever. And I went home, I drove a stick shift pickup truck that I had just bought and barely knew how to drive. And I stuck <laughs> my dog in the truck and uh, we drove across to Vermont and one serendipity led to another and we made a record and um, and people started offering us gigs and that was that. It doesn't always work out like that for no, people. No, it really doesn't so, and, so and thankfully not. it's kind of not. an amazing yeah. story. I think uh, one thing that helps obviously is that you have a good voice. Thank I've you. I've enjoyed uh, hearing it. And uh, in addition, you have a little bit of the background from your family listening to their stories. but. Since you came at it from kind of the back way of making the album first mm -hmm. <laughs> and then performing, yeah. um, how did you actually make the album? How did that happen? Um, well, uh, let's see. I was at a friend's show. The woman uh, and the person she was making music with I had heard was a fantastic producer. He was a pretty famous bluegrass star at one point, a guy named Bob Amos, and he runs a studio up there in... St. Johnsbury, Vermont, and I went up to him after the show and said, I'm sure it's completely impossible that you have any time, but do you know of anyone um, who has time on their time in their studio? And, mm -hmm. and he sort of looked at me and said, you make music with this, these other people? You know, and I said, yeah. And he said, well, come sing for me and let's see. And uh, so I went up and sang for him with my friend Paul, with whom I've made the records. And he looked at me and said, I think I'm free next week. And <laughs> so we went and um, we were quite, it's there, yeah. both of the albums have made are really simple. It's just two vocals and a guitar. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't a whole lot of hoop to do about it. There wasn't much to do other than go and record it. And um, it was all mixed and mastered in one studio. And, um, and then I learned by making a lot of mistakes. I figured out how to get the CD pressed and how to do download Cody. I'm such a Luddite. I own a typewriter that I use and mm -hmm. not in an ironic hipster way. You know, like I yeah. really, um, I'm kind of going kicking and screaming into the computer thing. So it's, um, it's not super easy for me. I'm not an early adopter, um, but I've figured it out and I've asked for a lot of help and it turns out there's YouTube videos to teach you just about anything. Well, one thing that we'll have to talk about is the YouTube videos because you've made some. Yeah. Yeah, but before we jump onto that, let's mm -hmm. talk a little more. So the the album that you made, mm -hmm. what type of music would you call it? I would call it folk music pretty broadly and include in that some bluegrass, some country, some blues, some soul. But folk is a nice umbrella yeah. because it can mean everything and nothing. It can mean everything or nothing. Yeah. And, and the music, you wrote it? No, the first two records we made are all covers. They're our mm -hmm. favorite songs, the most meaningful, the most heartful. Uh, hopefully this year there'll be another one with originals. Good. Yeah. So uh, when you play covers mm -hmm. on that, um, I asked you this a little bit, but uh, how, do you, um, how do you go about doing the covers? Um, well, there... mostly I sing the words. Mm -hmm. I make sure to play the notes. Or do you ask, you're meaning legally? Legally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, one needs to license the rights mm -hmm. to record them. And that has, that you, one usually does that in sort of batches. So you say, okay, I'll do it. I'll do, I'm going to press 500 of these or 1,000 of these. Okay. There's different rights for uh, digital downloads. There's different rights for streaming and video. And there's different rights for actual physical CDs or vinyl. Um, I actually, because I haven't, um, I bought a batch of rights before the uh, Music Modernization Act happened, which has been in the last year, and haven't checked with 
exactly what needs to happen with the next batch of rights. So if someone is currently about to produce a CD or produce a record and they're looking to license covers, I would go and just do all the research with the Music yeah. Modernization Act. But luckily there has been so much written in the last year because people have really been fighting for um, living wages for people like myself in the music industry, right. songwriters and um, producers and musicians. So there's probably a lot of information available. Good. Yeah. So after you made the album, mm -hmm. the first one, mm -hmm. Right, and then you started performing. Then what happened? Then I got so happy. <laughs> That's the <laughs> short answer. I just, it was so marvelous. All sorts of things just started to unfold in my life. And so Paul, my musical partner, he lives home in Vermont, as I said, yeah, and I live in Brooklyn. Name? His name is Paul Miller. Paul Miller. And he's okay. been a pro for longer than I've been alive. So mm -hmm. I am one lucky cricket to have such a friend who is so yeah. willing to stand beside me and, um, and go on wild adventures and, and bumble through not knowing how to do things. And he's just endlessly enthusiastic and patient. I, I don't know how I got to deserve that, but I did something right in a previous life. Um, so we started playing gigs. And because he lives there and I live here, it's not, I mean, if we lived in the same town, we'd probably be playing out once a week. Mm -hmm. But as it is how it's been since 2012 or 13 is that we do about two tours a year. He comes out here in the spring when he's sure that the pipes won't freeze on his girlfriend. Yeah. And we tour around in the West, <laughs> and then I go back in uh, usually August or September for somewhere between four and eight weeks and enjoy the summer and the fall in the Northeast, and we tour around there. Wow. So touring around the West, what kind of places do you play? Oh, my, my usual line is, I'll play anywhere that doesn't injure my soul. <laughs> um, so we've played, I mean, as you can imagine, standard venues, clubs, I love house concerts. Mm -hmm. We've played in libraries, we've played in cafes, we've played in, um, you know, summer gazebos and community centers, kind of you name it. And how do you find them? Oh, I just scream until someone tells me to stop talking and then offers me a place to do it professionally. <laughs> <laughs> so you cold call? I do a lot of cold calling. Cold call. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do a lot of cold calling, which I would recommend to any musician to just get used to mm -hmm. or to find someone who's used to and, and bring them onto their yeah, that's team. It's really hard to do cold calls. Is it? it? It's really hard. Why? In, in any aspect of life, it's hard to do phone call, okay. cold calls. But, well, it's, but you know, sometimes you just got to get over it and... and do it. You never yeah, know. I disliked it for a really long time. I disliked a lot of the admin for a really long time. And then one day I just said to myself, well, until you're big enough that someone will bother with you, you're going to have to do this. So mm -hmm. you might as well shift your attitude rather than investing in how much you hate this all day. Just say, right. it's part of the job. Here we go. And um, I believe in the thing that I am offering. I, I, you know, nothing's for everybody. Not everyone necessarily likes my music, but I make it with heart and I believe I make yeah. it well. And I am uh, strive to be kind and honest and decent. So I, I feel like I can offer something good in terms of someone to work with. So given those two things, I just said, well, then forget about it. You're selling something you believe in. And this is what they are interested in buying. Right. These people are interested in buying music. So go make some friends. And it has yeah. really changed a lot for me. Yeah. Have, you've gotten more comfortable at it. I, yeah. I think uh, you also, you get a little uh, um, patter going, right? I mean, once you've sure. done it over and over again, you get, you know, kind of what you're going to say. You don't stumble maybe so often. And Hopefully. You, yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing to do really also, because we're, we're hopefully providing this for people who are watching who want to do this themselves, is be really consistent and uh, don't give up. Mm -hmm. And um, I have spreadsheets with the venue, the contact person, their phone number, their email, the venues, um, all, all, all of the contact information, blah, stuff. blah, blah. Yeah, what they're looking for. Is it more folk? Is it more this? Do they need a person who only performs on Wednesday afternoons? Uh, what's the date range for what they're looking for? When I've contacted them, when I've told them I will contact them again, if I've ever played a gig there, and, um, and then I can kind of keep track of um, staying on top of things, because otherwise I'll go, oh, I think I, wait, was that a Facebook message or was that, you know, and then, yeah. and then my whole life goes down the tubes trying to find something I may or may not have done six months ago. I, I think that's an important lesson it's, uh, in, <clears throat> in my life and obviously it's helped in yours is get organized like that. Yeah, it's really and, worth it. And, yeah. and for those musicians who are watching or artists of any kind really who are watching, um, 
if if that's a stumbling block for you, do whatever you can to clear it or to find someone who can do it for you or with you because it will really change everything. Yeah, but you just gave us all the headings, so we know it. Yeah, down, go for right? it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm good. so I'm so delighted to help other people. So so many people have helped me so much, and it's really no skin off my nose to mm -hmm. um, resource people. You know, so. And I think one of the nice things is is occasionally the venues are actually looking for people, and so they're Absolutely. happy that you called them sure. and introduced yourself to them that sure, way, sure. so that's good, too. Yeah, another thing that I do, which I would recommend also, is um, look for people either at your level or who are bigger than you who make music that's similar, mm -hmm. and go look where they're playing, Yeah, right? And go see, do those people need openers? Um, do they have, uh, you know, a lobby performance? Do they have a mezzanine scenario in between acts? You know, just, and go make friends. Very good. Yeah. So some of these things, maybe you learned from your family. You, you come from a family of performers? I come from a family of uh, circus freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in my family is in show business. Yeah. yeah. Um, not actually, just to be clear, we are not, in fact, circus performers. I was just being yeah just jovial. maybe compared to an accountant but yeah exactly yeah, yeah everyone everyone does something in the, in the industry yeah and um, yeah some of it I learned from them but a lot of it was just trial and error and yeah. thinking okay if I were a smarter person than myself what would I do it th I ask myself that sometimes in other aspects it of my works. life and it's amazing it's shocking how the, much it the works. other yeah. thing I do is um, I say if I were getting paid at this moment to do this job and my boss was watching, how would I do it? Mm. And sometimes that kicks me in the rear to do it a little bit differently. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think the flip of that prism also, prism rather, also is um, if I loved this, how exactly. would it be, yeah. right? If I yeah. had all of the energy in the world, if I'd gotten a perfect night's sleep and a great breakfast and yes. a walk in the sunrise and then sat down because I loved this and I was gonna do it, then yeah. how would that feel and how would I speak? And, yeah, that's great. Give some generative energy. So one of the things that I know you like to do mm -hmm. is pass this information along to others. Yeah. And how are you doing that? Well, at the moment, actually just today, I did my fourth uh, Facebook Live talk about uh, how to be a hero for independent music. And um, that came about because sometime in the fall I wrote a list, just things that I thought, okay, well here's, I've been calling them small time, big impact things that people can do that are either free or cheap, mm -hmm. and cheap meaning like, you know, less than $20, yeah. um, and frequently more like three, that people can do, that they may or may not know to do, that really help music thrive. And, um, and so I wrote this little thing, and I thought, I wonder what I'll do about this, and then was talking to my partner, and she said, just go do a live chat. People are going to have questions, and and you're friendly, and yeah. you know, go figure it out. And so I did one a few months ago, and so many people got into it. And um, we talked through some of the list of, so you want to be a hero, how to be a hero for independent music, and then did another one, and did another one, and so today we did number four. Excellent. Yeah. So. How can you be a hero for independent music? Which well, just it, one or two things. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, I think it's really, really important. People don't, a lot of people don't know that streaming music pays artists almost nothing, like mm -hmm. laughably close to nothing, fractions yeah. and fractions and fractions of cents. Even the people who are at the top of every game are making very little money off mm -hmm. of their millions and millions and millions of streaming. And um, so people such as myself who have plays in the thousands are making almost nothing, and yet I still have to pay the same amount to produce the music, right? Yes. Um, my musical partner Paul likes to say musicians can die of exposure. And it's really true that it's great to have um, streaming platforms, but unless you're on ones that really pay you, and there are some, but they're few, um, it can be tricky. So I would say to people, if you really don't want to give up your streaming, uh, think of it as um, a free sample. Yeah. So if you go and you listen to someone and you think, wow, this record is fantastic, I want to listen to it again and again, then really the ethical thing to do is to go and buy it from the artist. Yeah. So keep streaming it if you really like that platform, but then you've paid into the actual working, living wage for the artist who's making it. So that would be my number one thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, another thing, actually, is if you're going to buy from the artist, which of course you are because you just took that other piece of advice to heart, um, do it as closely as you can to the artists themselves, because the more um, 
middle steps there are, the less money the artist is getting. So yeah. if you can buy something directly at a show, great. If you can buy something off an artist's website, great. Um, just get as close as you can. Um, because the money goes to them, but also if you can buy it at the show, if you go to a show and you know it and you love it, instead of saying, oh, I'll go buy it online, blah, 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 consider buying it actually there, especially if the artist is around because it feels so good yeah. to the artist to see the person who's been affected and to be able mm -hmm. to thank them and that that actually really boosts the heart as well as boosts the wallet and both of those things matter. So as you've been performing, through the years and uh, doing more and more shows on the West Coast and up in Vermont. What are some <clears throat> of the differences between performing on the West Coast and performing in the Northeast? Other than temperature? Yes. Uh, are there any differences? <laughs> what are some of the differences? That's interesting. Um, I'm not sure. That's really fascinating. I mean, so performing all over New England, people are, are very, very different. Um, generally, you know. Um, I remember performing at a house concert outside of Boston where people sat, it was a packed house, it was probably 90 people at a house concert, it was a packed house. Everyone sat transfixed, no one tapped their feet. Really? And by the time we got to the uh, intermission, I said to Paul, I think these people are all drugged, something terrible has happened to them, I don't know <laughs> what is going on. So at intermission I said, okay, you're allowed to, or once we got back, you're absolutely allowed to move and, um, you know, if you want to Bop your head. <laughs> if you, wanna, okay, you could sing along, assuming yeah. you know the words. Maybe sing the song we're singing. It helps mm -hmm. to both be singing the same right. song. Um, and uh, but then again, where I'm from in Vermont, where there's so much music and so much community around music, that would have never happened. So I don't know. Different yeah, communities think, are different. I think sometimes it's now it's hard to know what's expected at these places. And That's maybe they had been given a lecture when they before they came. Yes, that, yes, you know, yes. it's going to be at a house. It's going to be at sure. I'm certain you will be. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. It's interesting. Um, yeah, especially when something like, and that actually, that was the first house concert that this community had thrown. And so I think they hadn't, um, yeah. your, your point, I believe, is spot on because they hadn't developed a community culture around what happens mm -hmm. when we do this. Yeah, you don't know what's expected. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny to, um, to hear uh, performers talk about the different venues that they've been in and the culture. Um, you know, in Hawaii performing live as opposed to maybe in uh, Silicon Valley, know, Silicon Valley or Virginia or somewhere very, very yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll say also as to house concerts today, the Facebook Live talk was actually part two of So You Want to Host a House Concert. So if people are um, interested mm -hmm. in knowing about that, um, I would love to talk to them personally. I will send them also to uh, to Facebook to go and watch those yeah, videos. So if people want info from you, you have a website. You. Yes. What's your website? My website is uh, my name, Willa Mamet, and the word music.com. Okay, so, willamamutmusic.com. Yeah, they can find all the things there. Okay, great. So uh, uh, tell me again about what you've learned over time performing live. What I've learned over time performing yeah. live? Oh, that it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, you said uh, you, the first time, you know, when you really got into this music that it was so exciting, you started, ha you know, you were having fun. What did you want to be before you wanted to be a musician? I have had a bunch of careers, and frankly, I'm still sort of the queen of side hustle because, frankly, I don't, I'm not sure I know any musician who makes their music exclusively making music. I mean, maybe I do, and I just don't know it, but, um, and also there's just other interests in my life. Yeah. Um, I was a photographer for 20 years, black and white, darkroom mm -hmm. film photographer. I did fine art and portrait photography. And um, and because everyone in my family always needed, you know, headshots and cinema stills and right. like that. Um, and for the past 10 years, I've had a holistic health practice in Oakland. So I do all different types of types a of, bit of everything. massage. Yeah. But what did I want to be? I don't, that's a really good question. I think for a long time I didn't know. I was following the things that felt compelling mm -hmm. and that I felt like I was skilled and had something to offer, but none of them quite landed in the way that, that this does. I mean, body work actually does feel extremely purposeful, but in both body work and, um, and music, I feel like I can be of service mm -hmm. and that fills my heart in a way that nothing had previously. It's nice to be of service and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. So are you going to continue uh, performing with uh, um, Paul? Paul, thank you. Yes, I do. I play out solo mm -hmm. and I will continue to play out with him as long as he will have me because he's my dear and darling friend and um, 
and a monster musician and we have a great time and um, I think have a good show to offer. But it's been really lovely actually in the last year and a half or two years to also play out by myself and that's been, um, it's been quite a stretch and a great challenge and, um, and a great cracking open of my heart and stepping into the world. And it's brought me to some incredible people, including you. So thank you. And yeah. uh, cracking open of your heart, as you're saying, you started writing music. Yes. You did covers before, yes. and now you've started writing music. Yes. So now I do both. So do you enjoy it <clears throat> more when you've written the song, or more? No, when it's I enjoy a... it differently when I've written the song. But part of what I love about um, when I was exclusively performing covers, people would say. Uh, but you love to talk and you love words and but, but like why don't mm -hmm. you how about you write a song and I would get sort of puffed up and and porcupine prickly to say but but these are the words these people have already said mm -hmm. what's in my excuse me what's in my heart to say and um, and and don't push me yeah. um, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't really take kindly to people telling me what to do I'm a little bit of a grump in that way yeah, uh, me too well, just ask my husband <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so part of what's so extraordinary about poetry and about music um, is is the capacity to then step into the experience of someone else expressing some ineffable thing that has touched you mm -hmm. right and so to sing um, to sing some exquisitry penned by John Hyatt or Bonnie Raitt or Nina Simone is um, what a gift, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and such a different experience of, um, say, something like visual art, which has the same capacity to affect but can't be stepped into in necessarily right. quite the same way. Um, and, yeah, so I love them both. You know, the, the other thing about covers is uh, even if even if you feel the exact same way as the person who wrote it, it's kind of fun to be able to, on the days that you want to open up your heart, you can sing it and, and you can pretend that it's you who mm. wrote it. And on the days when you don't feel like opening it up, you can sing it and say, well, no, I didn't write that. That's not about me. Sure. You know? Or, <laughs> you know, there's different... It's being, being, for example, uh, a butch lesbian, it's really, really different when I sing a country song that was written about loving a woman than it was yeah. if, uh, you know, uh, Randy Travis is singing it. And yeah. I appreciate the capacity to be able to um, hopefully uh, be true mm -hmm. and also uh, be myself. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, in the country songs, many of my favorites are the ones that are not about uh, romantic love, but they're more about the rest of life as well. You know, like grandparents and relationships mm -hmm. with them. Those are some of my favorite songs. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know what happens when you play a country song backwards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm supposed to know. I forgot all this. I, I mean, you get back your job, your girl, and your truck. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a common line, and I, I knew that one, but it's, I don't like, know, it's, it's better. You gave me thank you for being yes. um, <laughs> genteel and allowing me the opportunity of her punchline. Sure, we'll pretend that's it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so right now you're doing how-to videos as well as performing and as well as uh, putting out music. But the how-to videos are um, how to help in. Um, help musicians and all, are you doing any other topics? Well, um, the videos so far actually haven't been exclusively for musicians. They've been for really anyone who wants to engage with music in a loving, ethical, community-minded, new world, world order for music kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, so audience members, producers, luthiers, whomever. Um, and uh, and I really hope for the for the capacity to have a platform for conversations in that way. So today, actually, um, a bunch of the people who were participating in the conversation weren't uh, weren't musicians and weren't necessarily house concert hosts, but had been to a house concert or had questions about maybe hosting in the future or, oh, my son's a musician and he couldn't listen in today and what can I tell him about, right. et cetera. So um, it, I, while I have plenty of ideas and I don't in any way shy away from telling people about them, I also like the opportunity to give people a platform to have a conversation themselves. So I uh, forgot to ask you also, what instruments do you play? Oh, I sing mm -hmm. and I play the piano. And very well, I've got to say. Thank again. you very I mean, much. I, I, I really enjoy your voice. So you. you sing and So I sing and I play the piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last six months or so I've been learning the guitar. And so I've been playing that out in my shows and having so much fun. 
so, so, so Good. much fun. So your idea of learning the guitar is, is probably far more advanced than a lot of people's. When you say you're learning the guitar, you're already performing the guitar now. I am, but the thing yeah. is, so one of the things that really held me back, so in high school, I worked in a music store, mm -hmm. um, and uh, tiny, so much smaller than, um, than even the room we're in now. And there were four lesson rooms and a sales area and a repair area and we probably had the space to sell 11 guitars total and they were yeah. all on top of us and it was marvelous and so that was my after school job when I was 16 and at the time I said I'm learning to play guitar I've wanted to play it my whole life this is what's going to happen and I am now 36 and I remember very clearly on my 25th birthday holding the guitar that I had bought at 16 going okay and you still haven't learned right, it yeah <laughs> and um and one of the things that really held me back was that I felt like I had to, it, all in caps and, you know, gold lettering with, um, who even knows, roses coming off of the edge, learn to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And I finally just said, well, what if I just learned to play this one song? Yes. And so then I could play that song. And I said, okay, well, what if I just learned to play this one other song? Because at a show or for my mm -hmm. own benefit, I don't need to know how to play the guitar. I just need to know how to play this song. Right? Yes. And it really, uh, it, cracked, it cracked the code a little bit in the rigidity of my perspective. Yeah, it made and, it easier to get started. And, uh, and the funny yeah. thing is, once you get started, it's if you give a mouse a cookie, you know? Yeah. And so then I'm calling up friends saying, can we FaceTime? Will you teach me that thing? I loved that song. Can you yeah. play me that? Okay, so I'm just gonna be a little bit of a pest. Can you do that again? I just need to take a video. <laughs> Hold on, pause there, you know? And, uh, yeah. and luckily I've been uh, spreading that out enough that people seem not to be Too totally annoyed. annoyed with me. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. That's yeah. great. It's so much fun. It's so, yeah, so, so I much look fun. forward to seeing uh, seeing you live. I've, Thank I you. haven't yet uh, seen you perform live, so you got to keep me on the list for when you do you uh, got it. West Coast stuff. You got it. And I'm sometimes on the East Coast as well. Great. So, uh, any last piece of advice or last comment that you want to make, real fast? Oh, In keep your chin up. Ten seconds. Keep at it, and feel free to uh, hit me up. Uh, you can find me on my website, willamamitmusic.com, or on all the other platforms, okay. actually all of them. And don't be afraid to talk to your heroes either. Okay, will do. Thank you very much for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>